Ba Nare Faena La, or Barney, per her nom de plume, lost track of time at around the third day of her stay in the depths. Owing to the fact that the cell she was in had no light to speak of, and was featureless save only for a rusty pail in one corner, all her clothes neatly folded in another, and the bars of her cell door. She could look out through said bars using her dark vision, but there was not much to see save for a pure black wall about thirty or so feet away. If she strained her face against the bars, she could see that the cells to her left and right curved a little, suggesting that the whole floor was circular. Food came frequently, but not in the format of a traditional meal, making context a next to impossible endeavor. Maybe Lost Track wasn't entirely accurate. She just gave up. The thing that kept her from going completely stir-crazy during her stay was her songs, memorized and made up. She sang at all hours, taking breaks only for sleeping or eating. The lyrics oscillated between saccharine and vulgar, oftentimes in the same song. The other prisoners on the floor appreciated the entertainment, and some even got a bit rowdy themselves when her more ribald lyrics struck their ears. And when the songs took a turn for the tragic, a chorus of sniffles could be heard in reply. It was after a particularly long and somber ballad that Triss Verdant finally spoke up from the cell to Barney's right. Was that... you... in the song? Were those... your sisters? Barney did not speak for some time. Instead, she lay on her belly, face turned to her right side. Her eyes were moist, and obscured her already limited vision. Her finger traced random shapes along the cold floor. No... Barney said finally. Well, not really. What do you mean, not really? I mean, it's more of a relational and contextual bond than a familiar one. Uh, are familial bonds not also relational and contextual? Not if you want this conversation to continue. Oh. Uh, sorry. A pause. A trace. A sigh. All four of us were born at the same time. The same time. Yeah. <laughs> Down to the minute. Well, that's quite the coincidence. Maybe. Or maybe it was one banger of an orgy. When Barney didn't get a response to her joke, she sighed and continued making shapes on the cold, hard floor. Well, it was a beautiful song, Triss said curtly. And I'm sorry. Barney loaded a particularly snotty retort in the chamber, but didn't fire it. Instead, her mind flashed to her and her sisters back in the Feywild, huddled around a planar portal in the vibrant orange fields of Pelmanok. She saw Miska, bright yellow like the day's sun. She saw Illithin in all her verdant green splendor. She saw Ita, almost camouflaged by the tall grass surrounding them. They all danced and laughed, their melodious voices weaving in and out of unison. Soon they would be in the land of Valdarian, writing their own stories into the pages of history. But at that moment, it was just them together as one, a truly perfect moment. In the dark of her cell, Barney traced another shape, and then another, and then another. Mm -hmm.